Mention Albert Einstein and the first thing that springs to mind is the theory of relativity. But Einstein never won a Nobel Prize for that. His one Nobel Medal, awarded in 1921 and presented in 1922, was for his pioneering work in quantum theory. If Max Planck hadn't fathered quantum theory, that role may well have fallen to Einstein. As it was, Einstein was the first person to take the physical implications of Planck's work seriously. The turning point came when he saw how Planck's idea of energy quanta could be used to account for some puzzling facts that had emerged about a phenomenon known as the photoelectric effect. In 1887, Heinrich Hertz became the first person to observe the photoelectric effect during his experiments that confirmed Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. Hertz found that by shining ultraviolet light onto metal electrodes, he could lower the voltage needed to make sparks jump between the electrodes. The light obviously had some electrical effect, but Hertz stopped short of speculating what that might be. I can find myself at present, he said, to communicating the results obtained without attempting any theory respecting the manner in which the observed phenomena are brought about. In 1899, the English physicist J.J. Thompson offered an important clue toward understanding the photoelectric effect. Thompson showed that ultraviolet light falling onto a metal surface triggered the emission of electrons. These were tiny charged particles whose existence Thompson had demonstrated a couple of years earlier and which he believed were the only material components of atoms. The photoelectric effect, it seemed to physicists at the time, must come about because electrons inside the atoms in a metal surface were shaken and made to vibrate by the oscillating electric field of light waves falling on the metal. Some of the electrons would be shaken so hard, the theory went, that eventually they'd be tossed out altogether. In 1902, Philip Lennard, who'd earlier been an assistant to Hertz at the University of Bonn, made the first quantitative measurements of the photoelectric effect. He used a bright carbon arc light to study how the energy of the emitted photoelectrons varied with the intensity of the light, and by separating out individual colors with the frequency of light. Increasing the frequency of light by selecting light from the bluer end of the spectrum cause the ejected electrons on average to be more energetic as predicted because it was assumed they'd been made to vibrate faster. Increasing the intensity of light by moving the carbon arc closer to the metal surface caused more electrons to be thrown out also as expected. On the other hand increasing the intensity had no effect at all on the average amount of energy that each ejected electron carried away. That came as a real shock. If, as physicists believed, the photoelectric effect followed from an interaction between electrons and electromagnetic waves, then intensifying the radiation ought to shake the electrons in the metal surface harder and so shoot them out with more energy. It was a mystery why this didn't happen. Several years went by before Lennard's observations on the photoelectric effect and Planck's strange but neglected theory of the quantum, both puzzling in themselves, were seen as arrows pointing to a common solution. Looking back now, it seems clear enough, but it took the genius of Einstein to apply quantization not to black body oscillators as Planck had done in a desperate effort to patch up classical theory, but to the actual radiation that's emitted or absorbed. Light itself is quantized, Einstein realized. All the light of a particular frequency comes in little bullets of the same energy, equal to the frequency multiplied by Planck's constant. And that's the key to understanding the photoelectric effect. An incoming light quantum smashes into an electron on the surface of a metal and gives up all of its energy to the electron. A certain amount of energy called the work function is needed simply to overcome 
the force of attraction between the electron and the metallic lattice in order to set the electron free. So there can't be any photoelectric effect unless this threshold is reached. Any energy left over from the exchange above and beyond the work function appears as kinetic energy, energy of motion of the ejected electron. Increasing the intensity of radiation, in other words the number of light quanta per unit area, has no effect on the energy of individual electrons because each electron is thrown out by one and only one parcel of light. Increasing the frequency of radiation on the other hand means that each light bullet packs a bigger wallop which results in a more energetic photoelectron. The fact that 16 years went by before Einstein won a Nobel Prize for his groundbreaking work on the photoelectric effect reflects how long it took the scientific world to accept that radiant energy is quantized. That may seem like an age, but the idea that energy, including light, is granular ran counter to everything that physicists had been taught for several generations. Matter is made of particles, Energy is continuous and tradable in arbitrarily small amounts. Light consists of waves, matter and light don't intermingle. These rules had been the mantras of physics for much of the 19th century and now were being overturned. There was also the issue of experimental proof. It took a decade or so for the details of Einstein's photoelectric theory to be thoroughly tested and verified in the lab. The actual observation that the kinetic energy of electrons kicked out by the photoelectric effect is tied to the frequency of incoming light in exactly the way Einstein prescribed was finally made in 1916 by the American physicist Robert Millikan. Millikan had in fact long been expecting to prove Einstein wrong and thereby to uphold the wave theory of light. Instead, he wound up giving powerful support to the particle theory and measuring Planck's constant to within 5% of its currently accepted value. Ironically, he won the Nobel Prize in 1923 for a superb series of experiments that dashed what earlier had been his greatest scientific hope.